Welcome back to Lipid Biosynthesis on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we talked about how we can take phosphatidic acid and ultimately convert it into two classes of phospholipids. We can have the inositol head groups and the glycerol head groups, the most complicated one being the cardiolipins. And one thing I pointed out towards the end of the video, hopefully I made it clear, was that the mechanism by which we do this is different than these three over here, which we're about to discuss. In this uh, set of phospholipids, these two, we have to activate a molecule, and we choose to activate DAG, the diacylglycerol. Okay, we're activating DAG, and, it's, and that's because it's bound to CDP. That stands for cytidine diphosphate. Okay, so remember... Anytime you have these nucleotides attached to something, that something becomes activated. And so then it's able to do a reaction to produce something else. So the strategy over here on the left side is to activate the DAG and make CDP DAG. What we're about to see is the strategy flips. Over here to make these three uh, classes of phospholipids, instead we're going to activate the head group. So we have CDP choline on the top here. CDP ethanolamine on the bottom here. Notice we didn't have a CDP inositol or a CDP glycerol 3 phosphate. Um, instead, we activated the actual phospholipid first to make CDP DAG. Very different strategy over here, but the end result's going to be fairly similar. The only other thing I wanted to mention before we get into the synthetic pathway is just notice that lipid biosynthesis, in particular the phospholipids, for whatever reason utilizes the cytosine nucleotides like CTP. Um, if we look at energy production and you know we use ATP, biosignaling for like G proteins is GTP. For whatever reason lipids chooses to use uh, CTP. So just something interesting to think about. Now let's get into the synthesis of these three phospholipid classes, the phosphatidylcholines, phosphatidylethanolamines, and phosphatidylserines. All right, so we're going to start again with phosphatidic acid, but instead of first reacting it with that cited little transferase, which gives a CDP DAG, we're going to react it with phosphatidic acid phosphatase. This is actually the same reaction from two videos ago when we saw how to get diacylglycerol, which was the precursor to triglycerides. But here, when we cut off that phosphate from phosphatidic acid to get DAG, DAG is going to be used in two different reactions that we're going to talk about in a couple minutes. Okay, but first we have to introduce the activation of the head groups before we talk about how DAG gets incorporated. So let's start at the top here. Our first head group here is choline. Um, to, to get the CDP attached to it, we have to use the enzyme choline kinase. That's just going to use ATP to phosphorylate choline to make phosphocholine. Then we're going to use a similar enzyme, also a cited little transferase. Remember what this is going to do is it's going to transfer a CMP group, cytidine monophosphate, from CTP onto the phosphocholine to make CDP choline. The reason it's diphosphate is remember, we already have one phosphate on the phosphocholine. So if we're transferring a CMP that has one phosphate, there's going to be two phosphates in total, so CDP choline. This is the activated head group. Okay? And this activated head group, notice, is a different strategy than what we saw in the previous video where we had the activated DAG. So now we have an activated head group, CDP choline. Now we can incorporate the diacylglycerol or DAG into it. This is going to be catalyzed by, has a complicated name, CDP choline, DAG, choline phosphotransferase. Um, the major thing to really know is just what the enzyme is doing. And what it's doing is it's taking the CDP choline and it's going to basically have diacylglycerol do a nucleophilic attack and knock off um, a, the CMP. The CMP group is going to get knocked off and essentially the DAG is going to be bound to the phosphate of phosphocholine. And what you'll get ultimately is phosphatidylcholine. The phosphatidylcholines, this is a really important class of phospholipids. They're usually very common and really this is the, for the most part, the end product. Um, this doesn't get processed any further. It's probably, I would say, the most, uh, it's the kind of the end product, the most complicated of all of them. In order to uh, form any others from this, you'd have to completely remove the head group, which is something we'll talk about a lot later. But now we've synthesized the phosphatidylcholines. To get phosphatidylserine, we'll have to first synthesize 
phosphatidylethanolamine. To do that, we'll have to start with ethanolamine. So ethanolamine is going to follow a similar strategy to choline up here. So ethanolamine is going to be phosphorylated by ethanolamine kinase. Ethanolamine kinase, by the way, is this is is thought to be the same enzyme as choline kinase. Um, ethanolamine kinase is, might be the same enzyme. They may it may just have a, a multiple specificities, but I'm just naming them differently here. But this is going to generate phosphoethanolamine, and this phosphoethanolamine is going to have a CMP group uh, added to it, again by a cytodilol transferase to make CDP ethanolamine. Okay, again, this is our activated ethanolamine head group because we got a CDP attached to it. Now, to get the phosphatidyl ethanolamine, this is going to be kind of the same thing that we just saw up here. So again, we're going to use the DAG we generated previously. The diacylglycerol is going to do a nucleophilic attack on one of the phosphates of CDP ethanolamine. You're going to lose CMP as a leaving group and essentially just get phosphatidyl ethanolamine. Now, phosphatidyl ethanolamine is a is a distinct class of important phospholipids. And again, it can be incorporated into membranes, but it has really three fates. One is just being incorporated into a membrane, but it can also be used to make phosphatidylserines, which we'll talk about in just a minute, but it can also be used to make phosphatidylcholines. If we look at the chemical structure of ethanolamine, now this is not right here bound to the phospholipid, this is free ethanolamine, but if we look at its structure, it says an OH, carbon, carbon, and an amine, okay? Choline, now I've kind of, it's been flipped a little bit backwards, but we still have the hydroxyl OH, carbon, carbon, but notice the nitrogen, instead of having hydrogens, it's been trimethylated. So if we were to take ethanolamine and methylate it on this nitrogen three times, we would actually get choline. Well, it turns out that we can actually have three successive reactions of phosphatidylethanolamine and methyl transferase, and it has to be three times, but it can take the phosphatidyl ethanolamine and it will methylate the ethanolamine functional group, the head group, three times to make phosphatidylcholine. Now the methyl group comes from s methionine or SAM, so you're gonna need three SAMs to do this, but you can actually convert ethanolamine to choline while it's attached to the phospholipid. Now notice this reaction is not reversible. Um, Choline, when it actually gets removed from the phospholipid, which actually can occur um, by several means, one is a phospholipase, um, the other is just in the intestines also by a phospholipase during um, food degradation, but the choline is going to have a completely different type of metabolism, which we're actually going to cover in the next video. Okay. So this reaction is not reversible. It only goes from phosphatidylethanolamine to phosphatidylcholine. Now, phosphatidylethanolamine can also be used to make the phosphatidylserines. Now, in the direction to make the phosphatidylserines, this is catalyzed by phosphatidylserine synthase. This reaction is, is a little bit different than the others in the sense that the ethanolamine group is not actually transformed or reacted to transform it into serine. Instead, what happens is in this reaction of the synthase, the ethanolamine is actually removed and then the serine will actually replace it. An actually free amino acid serine comes in and just knocks off the ethanolamine. It's basically a substitution. But that gives you your phosphatidyl serines and then the ethanolamine can come back here and basically do all these reactions again to make more phosphatidyl ethanolamines. Now, unlike uh, this reaction going from ethanolamine to choline, which is one direction, the phosphatidylserine can actually be converted back to phosphatidylethanolamine by a different enzyme. This enzyme is called phosphatidylserine decarboxylase. If you look at the chemical structure of, of serine, okay, you would notice that off of this carbon right here, there'd be a carboxyl group. Okay, so if I take that serine with a carboxyl group right here and decarboxylate it, all I'm left, left with is ethanolamine. In other words, so I take the phosphatidyl serine, remove the carbon dioxide, or remove the carboxyl group as carbon dioxide, I'm just right back to ethanolamine, okay? And so you can actually interconvert between these two phospholipid types by these two enzymes, okay? You cannot interconvert between phosphatidyl ethanolamine and phosphatidylcholine. So hopefully this video
give you a good understanding of how we get these three classes of phospholipids. Again, I want to just rehash the fact that the strategy for getting uh, the molecule up in energy so that you can transform it is different. Over here what we just talked about is the head group becomes activated. So either ethanolamine becomes CDP ethanolamine, an activated ethanolamine, or the choline becomes CDP choline, an activated choline. Back in the previous video when we got the inositols and the glycerol head groups, we actually activated the, the actual phospholipid itself to make CDP DAG instead of activating the head group. So the strategy here is different. But both of these pathways right here, or if you want to call them two pathways, uh, all of this occurs in humans. In E. coli, in bacteria uh, in general, the pathways are going to be a little bit different, but um, these are the pathways that actually humans perform. Okay. Now, um, some of these molecules, such as choline, um, are going to have a really distinctive uh, metabolic pathway for their degradation because choline is kind of a, a molecule that doesn't seem like you can do much with. You know, for example, how do you get off of how do you get these methyl groups off and so forth? How do you recycle this molecule? Uh, what do you do with it? Well, We'll talk about that in the next video, and we'll see that actually the degradation product of choline, which is also called betaine, is actually going to play some cardioprotective roles in a pathway that we've already seen before. So um, hopefully this video did give you an understanding of the, of the phospholipid synthesis. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. And as I mentioned in the next video, we're going to go over choline metabolism and the production of betaine with its corresponding functions. Thank you.